Thank you. You know, I want to introduce you to some people that are life changers. Not only life changers, nation changers. Those that God has called to bring the kingdom of God where they are. And I'm so blessed that God is leading me together now with people that I have been dreaming about. All my life, I wanted to work with Messianic Jews because I love Israel. And you know, when I read the book of, uh, uh, what is it called, Anne Frank, I was 15 years old. I cried through the whole book and I said, I belong to these people. Yeah. And I felt such an affinity. But you know, being an Austrian, and Hitler was an Austrian, I was so ashamed to ever go to Israel. Yeah. I didn't want to go. But then I was in America and they offered me to go with an American group. And you know what? I felt so secure. I said, they don't know, they think I'm an American, you know. But then we were in Yad Vashem. And the man before us, and I, I happened to be in the middle of the group, and the man before us told us his family history, how many people died in the Holocaust. And I couldn't take it anymore. I broke down weeping and I said, you know, you think I'm an American, but I'm an Austrian. I belong to the same people that Hitler belonged to. And I want to apologize and I want to ask you to forgive us for the crimes you have done to your Jewish people. And I broke down. He said, you're not going through Yad Vashem. You cannot take that. And he had me sit outside. But I begged him, I said, please forgive us. And he came out from Yad Vashem and came to me, gave me both his hands and said, I will forgive, but I cannot forget. And I felt there was a healing in him and it was also healing in me. Amen. And you know, when I got married, uh, <coughs> my husband and I only had five days together before we got married <laughs> because he lived somewhere else. We did a lot of communication by telephone. And on the wedding morning, I said, Lord, I didn't even ask him where his stand was on Israel. This is so important to me. But for a wedding present, he gave me a David star, a beautiful David star with rubies and diamonds. And I knew that was settled. Then you knew his stand. I knew. And we brought thousands of people to Israel because we knew that people need to know where their roots are. Once you know where your roots are, you can heal. And so many people, when they got out of the, of the plane, they kissed the ground, and I did too. And I said, thank you, Lord, for making me again, for giving me again a time in my home where Jesus walked. And so, you know, <coughs> we brought hundreds of people there. We, we were every year there for the Feast of Tabernacles. We lit this candle for Austria many years. <coughs> but then my husband was called home to glory. And, and it was like the Lord was closing that door, Israel, and led me to Africa. And I said, no, Lord, I want to Israel, I want to go to Israel. But one thing comforted me about coming to Uganda, I knew that Uganda had offered the Jewish people, in case Palestine wouldn't work out, mm -hmm. with Uruguay, I think, yes. to come to Uganda. So I thought, I am in a nation that loves Uganda. So that was very much my, my, my comfort. Now, God is also calling us to the north of Uganda. We have now a headquarter there, and we are enjoying it. It's the poorest area of all of Uganda. But there, you, walk, you go there and you feel like you're walking in the Old Testament. The people look like Old Testament people. They are all looking Jewish. And so I even called them Jacob, Joseph, I Isaac, you know, they all, they all took their names. So, uh, uh, a Jewish, uh, gentleman whose wife is an archaeologist, she told me that in the north of Uganda, uh, not, not in the north, in the, in the north, there in uh, north of Uganda, in the west of uh, uh, Kenya, in the south of uh, uh, Ethiopia, in the south of Sudan, in the south of Congo, in the north of Rwanda, are seven million descendants of King Solomon and Queen Sheba. Wow. I said, Lord, mm -hmm. ah, you led me to Israel in Africa. And I was very happy that the Lord now allowed us to start a headquarter there. And we really, we believe uh, there even there will be many kibbutzes and this will become the breadbasket of East Africa. That's our prophetic impression. <clears throat> but still, you know, I wanted in the ministry to have, I, I, I really wanted to have, to be under the leadership 
of messianic Jews, you know. And now you come, and you want to be under my leadership. No, no, equal, okay? We are under the leadership of Jesus, uh, Yeshua, Yeshua HaMashiach. HaMashiach. That's right. Yeah. Jesus. So when you came and you asked to join our ministry, I really thought I was either in heaven or I was dreaming or I was, I was it was very supernatural. Mm -hmm. And so I said, we are so thankful that you are coming with your family yeah. and coming to join us in establishing the kingdom of God Amen. in Vision for Africa, not only Vision for Africa, in the world. Amen. I do believe God will establish a ministry that will affect the whole world. Amen. And, and what I love so much about you is that you have it on your heart to get discipleship training mm -hmm. because you know, in the New Testament, uh, in, in the other four Gospels, never was the word Christians, mm -hmm. only disciples. Yes. Because unless we are a disciple of Jesus Christ and we, we become like Jesus, we don't have the right to be called Christians. So we have that sweet aroma exactly, of Christ exactly. emanating it from is, us. It is in, in Acts mm -hmm. that the, the, the disciples were called first Christians because they, they saw the similarity with Jesus. So these are, yeah, are Christ-like. Amen. Amen. And so I thank you so much that you come into our ministry. We welcome you with open arms, you and your I whole family. I feel very welcome. And, and we want you to really have a freedom here like you have never experienced before. Amen. Because I know uh, unless the Messianic Jews <coughs> are becoming the heads of the body of Christ, we have still missed it. Mm -hmm. We are lopsided. And there is no substitute theology. You remain the firstborn of Christ. Amen. And I believe there are many <coughs> Jews who will be coming to Christ Amen. Uh, in these last days Amen. and by faith. I also believe that God has a plan for Africa and Israel, Amen. as you have felt it too. Ooh, I, I, get the goosebumps. I want to read a scripture I was reading this morning just before coming and talking to you. This is in Numbers chapter 14. And uh, uh, Caleb, uh, Joshua and Caleb are saying this, If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us. Hallelujah. A land which flows with milk and honey. And so then he goes on with warnings, don't rebel against the Lord. And how often have people failed because of a lack of faith and you've seen it before too but when we walk by faith amen. god will do amazing things amen amen mm -hmm. so please isaac tell us a little bit because people you know sometimes wonder how can a jew uh, believe in jesus mm -hmm. you know but you uh, and and i know many messianic jews and i i love the depth of understanding they have because the the, the old testament is part of them you know for us, it's just the New Testament, but you have such a depth. And every time I sit under your teaching, I say, wow. So I'm looking forward. So would you please share with our, uh, the people that what, uh, listen to here, how did you recognize Jesus Christ? How did he become your Savior and your Lord? That's a great question. It really comes down to uh, God opening my eyes. It's like there was blinders on. Yeah. I could say I went through life blind and uh, somebody gave me a New Testament. And I thought, well, what can it hurt to read it? You know, and, uh, as it, I began it, it to read. It hurt the old man. <laughs> as I began to read the words of scripture, um, as I began to read in the New Testament, I realized this is written for Jews. Th this is a book about Jews, Amen. for Jews. Amen. Jesus was a Jew. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> Yeshua was a Jew. And, and reading these things, I went, wow. And it connected to the Old Testament. It could, I said, this, this is just fulfilling things that are written Amen. and prophesied about. Amen. Because as we grow up, as I grew up, we knew the Old Testament and you study yeah. the Old Testament yeah. and that's what you know. But I could say it's just something that the Lord opened my eyes. It wasn't a logical thing. It wasn't, it was just all of a sudden my eyes opened and I saw Yeshua for who he was, the Messiah, my Savior. I repented of my sins. I cried out to God and he forgave me and has changed my life radically. Amen. And uh, just like you, that did not happen in Israel. That happened in America. I, I went that. to America. You know, there's, there's something wonderful in that sense about America is that you have that kind of freedom to see things a little bit differently. And, um, and then God called me from there to Africa. And I thought, I'm surely going back to my people. He said, not yet. Be patient. Not yet. <laughs> uh, but there's a day coming. 
Uh, Amen. We'll have a big ministry. In and Israel. there's a lot of people from Africa. I believe God wants to take Ugandans Amen. and Amen. all from this region. You're talking Karama Jong yeah. to go yeah. and be a blessing to the land yeah. of Israel. Yeah. I have been asked to even have permanent choirs from Africa in Israel so that they can sing the love of Jesus into their hearts, even in synagogues. Yeah. yeah. So you know how much Jews love music. Yes. But Africans love music as well. Amen. And, and Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Uh, just tell us a little bit what your vision is for your coming to us and what you expect the Lord to do here. Amen. I believe that God has a plan of discipleship, as you said. I've been discipling <laughs> yeah. in Africa for more than a decade now. Yeah. And um, I've been doing it on a small scale. And I think the Lord says, hey, <laughs> let's open this thing up. Disciples who make disciples. And that's what's biblical. You do it and you say, well, what method do you use, Isaac? I just read in the Bible. I didn't get any program anywhere, any seminary degree in it. I said, what did Jesus do? Jesus took men and said, come, follow me, and I'll make you Amen. fishers of men. Amen. And that's what I plan to do here is just come and, and pour into people. And it's not what I have to give them. It's what God's word has, yeah. what his spirit, the transforming that comes by doing, and then equipping, empowering them to do the same. Just Amen. as you spoke about, hey, why can't every person after their disciple go and make disciples? Absolutely. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. I mean, and you know what impresses me so much about you and your family, that you live with those disciples, mm -hmm. very close. Mm -hmm. They are not there and you are here, you're together. And they can watch you, how you treat your wife, how you deal with your children, how you live everyday life. Mm -hmm. And you know, for me, uh, you know, teaching is a, a holistic thing. Uh, so that they hear your teaching, but they see how it is lived practically. And that is better than any university. It is. And that's the same with Jesus. Jesus was an amazing teacher yeah. and he taught and there's great value in teaching. Yes. I, I'm all for that, but they also watched him. Yeah. And remember later on when the Pharisees and the other religious leaders, they were saying, how do these simple people, Amen. these fishermen, uh, how are they able to do all this? And they said, they recognized they had been with, with Jesus. Jesus. They didn't recognize that they had been taught by Jesus, yeah but they had been with, with Jesus. Jesus. And that's my prayer is that people, the proximity is close, but it's, they don't need to spend time with me. They need to spend time with Jesus. Amen. And the Jesus that is, that is in me, is, that is in me and, and flowing in through me. So when they experience Jesus Christ, their lives get transformed. Amen, amen, amen. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I really pray that God will transform not only all of Vision for Africa, but transform Africa. Right. And we're, we're blessed to be a blessing. Amen. We don't keep it for ourselves. And I love your heart in that. That's what has attracted me to Vision for Africa. You say, let us be a blessing. Yes. Let the kingdom of God be felt in the Amen. people and communities around us. Amen. That's what it means to be a follower of Christ. Amen. Amen. And, and uh, you know, they need to, to recognize us by our fruits. Mm -hmm. And also, they watch us and they see if it works in our lives. I must tell you, because, you know, I gave my life to Jesus when I was seven years old, but, um, but I was a very sad child, and I wanted to bring many people to Jesus, and nobody, nobody gave their lives to Jesus. Some people even said to me, I have enough problems without Jesus, you know. I said, Jesus, why does it not work? He said, because the rapping is not agreeing with the message. I said, the rapping, that's me. Right. <laughs> I, I said, wow. He said, you look sometimes like you're, you're baptized in lemon juice, you know, and why would people want that? <laughs> so they look at you and they say, I have already enough problems without Jesus. So I said, Lord, start working on the rapping. And then he, he's still working, you know, <laughs> he's still working. We need to be a love letter of God to the people. They need to see us and say, that's what I want. And not only that, they also, in our weaknesses, yeah, he has yeah, shown. Yeah. How do we respond? You yeah. know, and I've made a lot of mistakes in my life. I think you've probably made a mistake here and many. there. <laughs> but how do we respond to that? Yeah. And when we show people, how do we respond? When I mess up, am I quick to ask for forgiveness? Yeah. To fall on my knees before yeah. Jesus yeah. and say, you know, it's your grace and your grace Amen. alone. Amen. And when we model that too, you know, that's impactful. Amen. So we're not showing perfection. We're showing vessels that are in his hands. Amen. Amen. So Isaac, I would like for you now, as a Messianic Jew, the head of the body of Christ, I would like for you to pray for Vision for Africa, but for all of Africa, mm -hmm. to become the dream of God. Amen. Please. Yes. 
Um, and we will unite ourselves in the Spirit with your prayer. Let's pray. Abba Father, uh, you are God, Yahweh, the one who is present. And you have amazing plans. We want to know your plans and see them. And we, we read about in your word your amazing prophetic plan for Israel, but not only for them, but for the whole world. Amen. You are the light of the world and you want us to shine that light. And I pray for vision for Africa. Father, that as an organization, we'd be faithful to follow in your direction, that your blessings will flow on us, but not so that we can be blessed and, and enjoy, but that we may be a blessing to others, a pipeline. Lord, taking your blessings and sharing them with because it is more blessed to give than to receive. Father, we receive from you and we give it out. There are material blessings, yes, but that's not what we're seeking after. That's not what we're craving. We're craving the spiritual blessings. Lord, that we will be sons and daughters of the King and people will know that and see your kingdom manifest here on earth, Lord, as we bring your goodness and your kindness to people, justice, and bring the goodness of the Lord and people may see and taste, be drawn to you. You're dr drawn by your loving kindness. Father, I do pray provision for Africa, that there'd be wisdom and a faith. Lord, that we would not be like the children of Israel who, who my ancestors, we, we faltered, we failed so many times because we did not act in faith. But Lord, you're not done with us and you, you forgave us. Father, the vision for Africa will move forward with great vision that comes from you. And Father, I also want to pray that it would be a blessing to the world. And Lord, Israel cannot be a blessing right now in disobedience when there are so many of us in rebellion my people, and I cry out and say, forgive us, O Lord. We have not done as you have called us to do, and, and yet there's some blindness on our eyes. It seems that we know you from an Old Testament standpoint, from a legalistic standpoint, from a God who is so rigid, and yet we've not seen who you are, Jesus, as the Messiah, the lover of our soul, the one who is and is to come, the mighty God who forgives, who heals, and I pray, Lord, that Israel may once again be a light into the nations. Father, that many will come to know you, Yeshua. That you open our eyes, that you open my eyes to see. And when we see you, we'll run to you and fall at your feet and say, we're sorry. And then you lift us up and say, walk ahead. May Israel once again be a blessing to the nations, not just in a physical sense as they are through technology, as they are through so many different uh, fruits and vegetables that travel all over the world, but there may be a blessing spiritually, Lord. Use Vision for Africa to have an impact in Israel as they're having an enormous impact here in Uganda. But let the reach spread into the nations around. Father, that there may be a time where many people here in Africa are calling on the name of God, walking in the right ways and a blessing to the rest of the world. Father, they may be poor or see themselves poor materially, but they are rich in many other ways. A land rich. Here in Uganda, we see a very rich land. Lord, let them see that richness that comes from you, the richness and abundance that is in you. Father, bless Maria as she also has many things, Father, in front of her, and she's putting them before you. Bless all the leadership here at Vision for Africa. Bless those that sponsor, that give, that pray. Lord, they are partners in this. And they're wonderful partners. Some give, some go, some pray. Lord, we should all pray that your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. B'shem Yeshua HaMashiach, I pray. Amen. Amen. I want to add something here, Isaac. You know, I do believe uh, a, 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 a Jewish rabbi told me when I was in Israel, that the whole story of the development of the Jews. And he told me, he said, you know, so far we have believed the Torah is the highest revelation. Oh, yes. And Moses is the... Yeah, yeah <laughs> Moses. But we now feel we are standing at a war hmm. and something new is coming. We don't know yet what, but we know something new is coming. And you know, I have just written a book, Coming to Your Destiny. I had it in my, in my bag. The Lord said, read the first, read the first verse from that book. I didn't remember the first verse. So I opened my, my book and it was the following here. <clears throat> 
That's in 2 Corinthians 3, 5. Oh, I have it only in, in German. Do you have it in English? Yes. 2 Corinthians 3, 5. This was the revelation for me because I felt like Jesus with the, with the Pharisees in the temple. 3, 5. 3. Uh, yeah. Let, let's start with 4. Uh, and we, it says the Spirit, not the letter. And we have such trust through Christ towards God. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God, who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of, but the, of the Spirit. Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. I said, now we are entering into the dimension of the Holy Spirit. No, he said, read it again. So I read it again. He said, I hear it, Ruach. Ruach. I said, yes, we are entering the dimension of the Holy Spirit. And then it says, but if the ministry of death written and engraved in stones was glorious so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away. Now will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? For if the ministry of condemnation had glory, the ministry of righteousness ex exceeds much more in glory. For even what was made glorious had no glory in this respect because of the glory that excels. Now, if what is passing away was glorious, what remains is much more glorious. Hmm. I believe we are entering into a, into a dimension where we go from glory to glory to glory. I believe we will see revivals worldwide that the world has never seen before. I believe we will see miracles as a, on the daily order. Mm. I believe that God will heal people and through us, you know, my, my cook who was sick with AIDS, I prayed for her and she's healed Hallelujah. in Jesus' name. It's an incurable disease. Now, I do believe that demonized people will be set free. I believe the sick will be healed in a massive way that we've never seen before. Maybe we soon we don't need any hospitals anymore. No mental disease homes because people are getting into the right order. But it's a process and we need to bring it to... God wants to work through us. He does. He does. And uh, he loves the world. He wants <laughs> yes. this. This is his desire is for all people to be yeah. saved. You know, Adam and Eve in paradise, there was no need, no shortage, no disease. They, the, even the lions were like pussycats. Mm -hmm. It was through sin that all this came. And now the Lord is bringing us into a, a, a dimension of righteousness where the people will know who they are in Christ. You know, to me, all of Christianity uh, so far, they came out of Egypt like the, the Israelites. They are, they are supposedly no longer under the control of the devil. They went through the Red Sea, which stands for baptism, where yes. Jesus did everything. Yes. Then they were supposed to go into the promised land. But never made it. They didn't make it. They, they died on the, their carcasses were laid across the wilderness. Do you know that I said to the Lord, I never had such a lousy result as you did when you took the Hebrews out of the... Two only made it into the promised land, which was the original calling. Mm. And I believe all of Christianity is now standing at the River Jordan. Mm -hmm. Because there, the River Jordan stands for Galatians 2.20. I'm crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So far, for 2,000 years, we have lived, I, myself, and me, Lord, bless us three. Now comes the time, Christ in me, the hope of glory. And I do pray that all the people will come to this revelation because that is what Jesus died for, to bring us into a dimension of Christ-likeness that where he does everything. Boy, I and can't... isn't the enemy fighting against that? Satan hates he, that plan all he, over the world. He is, because he knows his time is short. You know and he what? is doing every trick, and we see that right Amen. now in the world around us, Amen. using fear, a yeah. global spirit of fear. Look yeah. at 2020, yeah. a spirit of fear covered the earth. Yeah. Satanic. Yeah. 
But Christ came to set us free amen. He? from amen. things like that, amen. from free amen. and uh, of, of all that type of thing. Yeah. So. You know, when Jesus was on the cross, the devil thought he's killing God. Right. He never counted that that was done out of love. And when Jesus said, it is finished, that was the death sentence for Satan. You're right. Now comes the execution. And he knows his time is short. His time is short. Before his execution. So he does everything possible. And all the people that don't live by faith believe all these lies and are like hypnotized. I tell you, I, I, I can cry day and night for the millions of people that are right now tortured with the language of hell, which is fear, false evidence appearing real. But we are supposed to, preach, to speak faith. Yes. For all and I trust him. And, 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 tr and tell people the truth, God's word. And I believe that he's the same, Jesus was the same. If he cured people back in, and we read in the Bible all these miracles and what he did there, yeah. and the early church was doing yeah. it, yeah. there's no reason why it's not happening today. Amen. And it is happening in some places. And it, it should is. happen in a way the world has never seen it before. That's because right. now Jesus is coming to establish his kingdom. He is, and I'm waiting for him. Oh, I'm waiting. I am too, but he's already here. Yes. He's living right. in you and in me. Amen. And we are to do what he has prepared for us on earth. Mm -hmm. And we'll be faithful. Amen. Thank you, Isaac. I appreciate your obedience to come to us with your whole family. And I do trust it's the best time of your life. Amen. And I'm thankful for the open arms. You've had open arms. And I think that's the Lord directing you. Amen. I know it is. Amen. And uh, I have confirmation of his word, confirmation by the spirit. There's wonderful things ahead. Let's press forward. Amen. Joshua and Caleb style. Amen. Let's Amen. go and take the land and God Queen, And Queen Esther. Yes, right. And Queen Esther. And we will give all the honor and the glory to God. Only. But we Amen. keep the joy. Mm -hmm. There's going to be joy unspeakable. Amen. So much joy ahead of us that we hardly can take it. Amen. Bless you. That. Dear ones, I trust you were encouraged through this message. The best is yet to come. Come. Chikumi ku chikumi to Jesus, 100%. Half a, Christ, half a Christian is nothing. You need to be sold out 100% to Jesus. And then I promise you, you will experience a life you never dreamt possible on earth. I experience it. Love you. Don't forget, you are loved. You're beautifully made. You're favored. You're blessed. And God is for you. Who can be against you? Shalom.